The uh, tantalizing promise of quantum computers is that they can do certain tasks exponentially faster than classical machines. And the quantum supremacy experiment is proof that this is indeed the case. The word quantum computer is a little bit misleading because it sounds like a computer. And when people think of computer, they think of a phone or a laptop. The truth is the phone and the laptop and even a very powerful supercomputer all operate according to the same fundamental rules. And a quantum computer is fundamentally different. The classical bit stores information as a zero or one, and a quantum bit can be both zero and one at the same time. If you have two quantum bits, then there are four possible states that you can put in superposition. With three qubits, it's eight, four qubits, it's 16, but grows exponentially. The nice thing about quantum supremacy is that this is a very well-defined engineering milestone. In a nutshell, what we're trying to do is we're trying to show that experimental quantum computers can surpass the best supercomputers in the world. To actually demonstrate quantum supremacy, we have these three steps. First, pick a circuit. Second, run it on the quantum computer. Third, simulate what the quantum computer is doing on a classical computer. We gradually increase the complexity of that circuit. At some point, it becomes completely impossible for the classical computer to keep up. Then we say we've achieved quantum supremacy. We started building together the quantum chips to do this experiment. And then the evolution of the devices with more and more qubits and more and more complexity. It's very much an iterative process. A lot of the work that we put in was not just these chips, but is also the infrastructure that you need to drive those chips. The cryostats that we install them in, all of the control electronics, software, all of this stuff is needed and it all has to be developed. When the experiment started, we were getting data from the experimentalists. We saw initially a beautiful straight line corresponding to our predictions. Then right before we hit supremacy, they, it dropped much faster and it fell below the threshold where it needed to be. And there's nothing we can do because we don't know how to analyze past that. So everyone's like, oh, we're screwed because it's just, it's getting really, really bad at large number of qubits. It's like, well, maybe there's some really complex interaction between all the qubits. It turned out that the reason was rather benign. We calibrated it a little bit better and then it, this problem disappeared. So there wasn't like a, oh, we did it. I think we crossed it and then it wasn't clear that we crossed it. So we crossed it a little bit further. It took me like a day to realize like, hold on, you know, this is actually experimental data. <laughs> it's kind of amazing to see, you know, how well the theory works. The, the processor that achieved quantum supremacy is called the Sycamore processor and it's parallel processing two to the 53 states, which is 10 million billion. And thus that enormous amount of parallel processing is what gives it the power. When we run a small chunks of the computation in the largest supercomputer in the world, our estimate is that it will take thousands of years to complete the full computation. Technologies are born this way. Let's say the space age started with a satellite orbiting Earth and it was not doing much, it was just beeping. The big technical achievement of quantum supremacy was really dependent on all this young talent who's kind of taken this and gotten it to work at a very technologically capable level. We have reached a new computational capability. There are certain computations, the only place in the world where you can compute those things is here in our data center at Google Santa Barbara. For the first time, we're showing that we can solve a problem that is just infeasible to do on the biggest computers ever made by civilization. And what's exciting is now we're ready to turn this over to the world and say, let's figure out what we can do with this. The thing that excites me most is building a useful quantum computer. When we can give a researcher a tool that is unlike any other and say, great, figure out something cool to do with it. Mankind is pretty good at that. <laughs>